Juneteenth began in Texas, but there's a story behind that. 1863, Emancipation Proclamation is signed. Many folks, of course, don't have the luxury of having a communication like we do, and it took a while for it to reach certain parts of uh, states that were still having slavery. Many soldiers were dispatched uh, to different places to spread the word. Uh, and by the time that that one particular soldier reached uh, Texas, a year, year and a half had, had lapsed. We also think that maybe some masters turned around and decided to uh, withhold the information so they can get an extra crop in. But by the time it reached Texas, we started celebrating. Um, blacks started celebrating. Slavery was over. June the 19th. And that's why we celebrate June 19th. Juneteenth uh, Festival in Buffalo is Buffalo. It is the community of Buffalo. It is the community of Buffalo pulling together and showing um, the artifacts are showing what we can do as a people. Our theme is striving to keep our tradition and our culture alive. And we have artifacts from Africa uh, being showed at Juneteenth. We have music. We have games that we play uh, from old African days. Drums, storytelling, and the music, and all that fest festivities. History is very important. Our youth needs to know how we got as far as we got. Uh, there's a lot of people who have died for the privileges that we now share and enjoy, and they need to know that. Not only for uh, Juneteenth and Afro-Americans, but um, to all parties involved, because I see that a lot of history uh, is not being shared like it should be um, in our culture, and other cultures. And our youth needs to know, that they need that foundation to know um, how they got where they are. From Channel 2 News, Juneteenth, a celebration of freedom. Here's Channel 2 senior correspondent, Rich Kelman. Hello and welcome to our Channel 2 News special, Juneteenth, a celebration of freedom. This half hour, we'll highlight the community celebration of Juneteenth, June 19th and 20th at Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Park on Best Street in Buffalo. It is a celebration open to all. And we'll take you on a journey to show you the history and the people behind Juneteenth and what it means to all of us in Western New York. One of those people making Juneteenth a living celebration is local storyteller Karima Amin. She is a former teacher, she's a writer, she visits local schools telling African-American stories that entertain and they inform and they inspire children as well. We have uh, Karima Amin with us today. Thanks very much, uh, Karima, for joining us. Thank let me you. Ask, let me ask you about storytelling. Uh, what do stories do for us? Well, stories are for both entertainment and education. And uh, telling our story is, in fact, telling our history. And I think the more you know about your own history, your own story, the more open and welcoming you are to wanting to know the stories or history of other people. And now Juneteenth gives you a unique opportunity to do exactly that. Absolutely. Um, the story that comes out of the Juneteenth celebration is a story of freedom. It's a story of determination and courage and perseverance and should serve as inspiration to freedom-loving people everywhere. Okay, we'll continue to tell that story today. Thank and, uh, you. We'll be back with you in just a few minutes. All right. Well, we heard that Juneteenth started in Texas in 1865, but how did the celebration make it to Buffalo? Here's Channel 2's Esther Miller. It's a cool night in May, the year 1999, inside the Anchor Bar. Belial Abdullah plays the soulful sounds of jazz, conjuring up memories of the first Juneteenth celebration in Buffalo more than 20 years ago. I think it was really about, about a struggle in a way. Society had changed a lot. It was about remembering things of old. The local Juneteenth was an idea that stemmed from a movement in the late 60s when members of the black community asked Saul Alensky to help organize the BUILD organization. BUILD helped create a number of programs including starting BUILD Academy. Documentary filmmaker Doug Ruffin says by 1976, the year of the bicentennial, organizers wanted to celebrate their accomplishments. 
just a little bit. They didn't feel as if the um, bicentennial year was anything for them as African Americans to really be excited about because they felt that George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and um, Patrick Henry and Nathan Hale, a lot of those guys supported slavery. They wanted to put the celebration on Jefferson Avenue, home of the once thriving business district and the Apollo Theater. Well, since a riot in the late 60s, the strip had deteriorated. The members of the build organization felt was it that they could use the Juneteenth Festival as a kind of a vehicle to revitalize the Jefferson Avenue business districts. And what they would do is they would paint murals on a lot of those old and dilapidated buildings. They called in community groups from around the region, and by June 26, 1976, Juneteenth jump-started with a parade of drill teams, bands, and even a king and queen. Up and down, you can see just wall-to-wall -wall black folks shaking hands, hugging each other, loving each other, saying, I haven't seen you in years. It was, it's like a one big, one big family reunion. Food of all types were available, also musical talent playing 200s. Musician Belial Abdullah remembers sharing the love of music and history. This music that we play here is part of a great legacy that dates back hundreds and hundreds of years ago that, that, that's, that's a very positive life force. A life force that feeds the Juneteenth festivals of yesterday, today, and beyond. Esther Miller, Channel 2 News. Well, the Buffalo Juneteenth Festival has indeed grown over the years. We are told it is now the largest Juneteenth celebration in the Northeast. Keeping Juneteenth and its rich history alive and well in western New York is a core group of dedicated people. The Juneteenth Committee has been meeting for months at their newly renovated Juneteenth Center on Genesee Street. That's where we recently met two of their founding members. They've lived the history that most of us only know through books and videos. To them, Juneteenth is a way to bring the struggle for equality to a new generation. They've been pals for 20 years or so, Judson Price and Luther Burnett. Luther, a one-time probation officer, Judson, a retired school guidance counselor, both founding members of the festival here, the two with beliefs in common. Hard work, patience, save some of what you have. If you had to watch something grow, you almost automatically develop patience. Judson grows a garden each spring. Grapes, potatoes, tomatoes, okra, corn, everything. And my kids had a chance to see that. And the only problem I had is the stuff that I had came from the ground. The other stuff that they wanted came from the store. The two friends learned about the more than century old Juneteenth celebration on their own. But we never studied that in school. Oh, no, no, we no, picked no, it up. No, 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 no. Unfortunately, they almost made us feel that the slaves were happy. Oh, yeah. Well, you look at the old Hollywood movies. Take a look at Showboat. Oh, please. It, yeah. I cringe. <laughs> Stuff like that. And so this is what we want the kids to recognize. They can't even recognize because both of us remember we couldn't even uh, sit in the front of the bus. 1954. This was after I was out of college. And it's hard to believe, but you talk to the kids nowadays, they just can't conceive that. Same thing with the sports. I went to see Jackie Robinson when I was a Cub Scout at the Offerman Stadium. He wasn't even in the pros. So, you know, history has changed a lot. It may have changed, they say, but nobody should miss the lessons. I want my kids and yours and everybody else to know that because we had no salary, we are now poorer than, than, than other people who had, who had people working for them for free. And so these are the kinds of things that bother me, but, but education and, uh, and voting, I really want all of my people to, to look at those and, and treat them seriously. And these friends want younger friends to concentrate on the first one first. Take advantage of the kind of education many before them were denied. You might remember Judson Price as the man shot by two drug dealers back in 1993 for trying to get them out of his neighborhood. He testified against them there behind bars, but Judson is still in his Winslow Avenue home. Well, Juneteenth is indeed about people, and people from our area, of all backgrounds, once played a key role in helping slaves find freedom in the North. Channel 2's Claudine Ewing tells us about Buffalo's role in the Underground Railroad. We are, we are climbing, climbing Jacob's ladder. 
the Underground Railroad was the route to freedom for the slaves during the 1800s. If you don't know much about the history of the Underground Railroad, you may think it's a train, something like that, but it's not. It was neither underground nor was it a railroad. What was it? Was safe places, secret hideaways, where people could move from one place to another in search of freedom. Southern blacks seeking freedom up north traveled by foot to western New York. Why Buffalo and surrounding areas? Because of its close proximity to Canada where slaves could be free. Today, people tour one of the most popular western New York stops along the Underground Railroad. What's the name of this church? The Michigan Baptist Church. The Michigan Street Baptist Church, built in 1845, is located on what's now called Michigan Avenue. If you came to the Michigan Street Baptist Church as a fugitive, you pretty much knew that you were going to be hidden or, 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 or you were going to be safe. And, and someone would, would know to get you to the next stop. A cubby hole in the church basement is where slaves hid from bounty hunters. It's ugly. The cubby hole basically was the last remnants of, of a hideout here at the church. When bounty hunters left, a parishioner took slaves from the church to the American Hotel near the Black Rock Canal. This is the Breckenridge Meeting House where many slaves would come to get away from bounty hunters. Slaves maneuvered through the dark basement. It was a hiding place during the day as they prepared to travel at night. They were a hop, skip, and jump away from Broderick Park at the foot of Ferry. From the waters, they could see Canada, and that meant freedom. Other Western New York Underground Railroad stops include the Quaker Meeting House in Orchard Park and Athol Springs near Hamburg. It's where slaves could cross Lake Erie into Canada to be free. The Underground Railroad, one of America's first multicultural humanitarian efforts. It was a way to freedom, and Buffalo was a big stop on the roadway. Claudine Ewing, Channel 2 News. The Juneteenth Festival is offering free tours of the Underground Railroad sites. and They are on June 19th and 20th. A bus leaves from the corner of Best and Fillmore each day at 2 p.m. The tour lasts about three hours. One of the sites you'll visit is Broderick Park at the foot of West Ferry. Plans are underway to create a new Freedom Memorial Park at that site. That's where slaves seeking freedom crossed the Niagara River into Canada. To many who came to this point, it might seem like there was danger ahead. But believe me, when you read the history, if you got to this point, there was freedom across that water. The new Freedom Memorial Park will include a picnic area, outdoor theater, and a reflecting pool. We'll have more on that later in the program. Storyteller Karima Amin joins us again. Karima, mm -hmm. uh, the story of the Underground Railroad and the many stories within that are yes. very important, correct? They're very important. I think that those stories need to be celebrated, communicated, and commemorated so that people understand how so many people were involved in that undertaking. Not everyone involved in the Underground Railroad looked like me. There were people of many faces and many races who worked together to make sure that what happened on that Underground Railroad would be successful. Yeah, what they had in common was, as I understand it, they all shared the same value regarding slavery. Right. It's they, evil. It's evil. And they all were people who love freedom. And I think that's the most important point. Okay, Corinne. We'll be back with you a bit later. Thank you. The work of local African-American painters, poets, and sculptors. That's part of the growing tradition of Juneteenth. We'll check it all out for you next. Juneteenth is about black people celebrating life and love and freedom. Freedom. Welcome back to Juneteenth, a celebration of freedom. I'm Rich Kelman, and this is the Langston Hughes Center on High Street in Buffalo. This is where you can catch an art exhibit during Juneteenth, and among the works of art are dozens of photographs. Channel 2's Esther Miller says those photographs were taken in the Queen City over the past 30 years. Peace and love. A lot of things have changed over the years, but a lot of this has been forgotten in the process. Artist John Baker is talking about images, 
taken over the last three decades in Buffalo. Famous faces and famous moments he plans to display at the Langston Hughes Center on June 18th. Moments dozens of artists are capturing on canvas, a history lesson for the masses. Martin Luther King was in Buffalo. We've educated him to that point. Malcolm X was here in Buffalo. Stevie Wonder was here in the steps of City Hall. You know, Jesse Jackson was playing basketball in the park with some of my kids. You know, John Young was the real first person to do the chicken wings. Baker says live music with a 70s flair will accompany the art. One driving inspiration behind this photo extravaganza is photographer Simba Malay. Simba picked up a camera in 1959 and since then has taken thousands of photos in Buffalo. He has a laundry list of famous faces like Bill Cosby, Bishop Desmond Tutu, and Sugar Ray Leonard. But Simba says his favorite pictures reflect the 70s movement and the struggle of the black community. Stories stories and we had a thing in the 60s that we wanted to rewrite our own history okay and a lot of my photos show that because I believe most of the, the only weapon that Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, and Malcolm X and those people the only weapons they had was the truth. Oh baby oh, don't stop it please don't stop it give me a little break peace and love. Simba says he loves capturing the moments documenting the life and times of the present and the past. Priceless local history of an era that the public will get a chance to look at. Esther Miller, Channel 2 News. That art exhibit will open June 18th and run throughout the summer right here at the Langston Hughes Center. A Buffalo woman with an amazing connection to the flight to freedom. Her story next on Juneteenth, a celebration of freedom. It means that our people are sticking together. We're trying to establish something good for children. Positive thinking, drug-free atmosphere. This is the Michigan Street Baptist Church on Michigan Avenue in Buffalo. Claudine Ewing took us here during her report earlier in the program on the Underground Railroad. Now maybe you agree that everybody needs heroes. And the best kind of heroes are people like us, people we can connect with. And Harriet Tubman fills that bill. She has a legacy that lives today in Buffalo. Take a look up there. That's her name on what has long been Michigan Avenue in Buffalo. Harriet Tubman Way. Put her name up there. That's what Arlene Olden told Buffalo City leaders. After all, Michigan Avenue was a key route on the Underground Railroad. And Harriet Tubman was one of its leading conductors. Harriet Tubman was a very tiny woman. She was also very mean. <laughs> she carried a pistol. She threatened fellow slaves who wanted to turn back, live north or die, she'd say. 300 slaves went north with her and lived. We were always taught that. From As little children. Little girl? Yes, that's the only way we knew. Because it was not taught in school. Arlene Olden knows because she is Harriet Tubman's great grandniece. That's Arlene on the left. Her mom took her and her cousin to the library each Friday. They took out books by black authors and poets. The family spent summers in Auburn, New York, where their renowned relative eventually settled. Tourists now flocked to the home where she lived. Arlene Olden says Harriet Tubman was motivated by a deep belief. She knew deep in her heart slavery was wrong. 24 years ago, Arlene Olden helped found the Harriet Tubman 300 Club to tell the story. If you've ever gone fishing near the Peace Bridge, you might have seen what they've done. They put up an historic marker just across from Canada. It recites the astounding fact that many slaves had to cross to Canada to find freedom. The Canadians have really done this for years and years. They've preserved our heritage better than we have. Members of the 300 Club last fall were planting a tree on Michigan Avenue at Sycamore Street to remember Harriet Tubman. Man stopped. He was a, a young man, but 
He said, what is all this? Which is an opportunity. And he said, gee, you know, that's something I never knew. I said, well, now you do. Bring your children. Arlene Olden has three grandchildren. Her home is filled with photos and paintings for them to teach them about heroes, about ordinary people spurred on by circumstance to rise to greatness. You got to have a hero. You got to have a hero. <laughs> and we do. And by the way, that 300 Club reference was to the 300 slaves saved by Harriet Tubman. She died in 1913. She had been widely regarded as the Moses of her people. Nonetheless, Congress granted her a pension of only $20 a month. It's not much now, and it wasn't much then either. In just a moment, we'll be going back inside for a story and a lesson about the Neheim Man as Juneteenth, a celebration of freedom, continues. We want everybody to help us celebrate. We don't want just our people, the African Americans, to come here and celebrate. We want, every, we want unity. That's what we want. We want unity. We want everybody to enjoy us. We want them to come here and learn about us, to learn our culture. Welcome back to Juneteenth, a celebration of freedom. And storyteller Karima Amin, tell us a story. Well, Rich, I did just that. Not too long ago at Early Childhood Center number 17, I shared a story called The Nehi Man. It's all about what makes us special. My name is Karima, and for today, I'm your storyteller. Now, you're a storyteller, and your teacher's a storyteller, but I'm a storyteller, too. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Well, my story is about a guy who was really little. He's called the knee-high man. He was a real little guy who was real tired of folks patting him on the head all the time and calling him shorty. It's an African-American folktale. It's a very old story. But I think the lesson in the story is extremely important. Sometimes we get so caught up in what other people think of us and we begin to feel that we're too tall or too short, too fat or too thin, too light, too dark. He said, I'm the knee-high man. And Mr. Horse said, I can see you are. He said, I'd like to know what I've got to do so I can be more sizable. I want to be big, just like you. And oftentimes we have to step back, take a real good look at who we are. Just take a good look at what we've got here and be grateful for it and accept it and love it and respect it and value it. Everyone says that the owl is wise. So he went out back and he found Mrs. Owl sitting in a tree. Don't get so caught up in other people's opinions of what we need to be or what we ought to be. When we take a good look at what we've got, then we can really see what it is that we bring to the table. Mr. Nehi man, you don't need to be any bigger. What you need to do is learn to love yourself, accept yourself, respect yourself, and value yourself. And if somebody bothers you, you'll be as big as you need to be. I believe if these children feel better about themselves, then they can't help but make this world a better place. And if you need to see far away, you'll climb to the top of that tree. You're fine, just the way you are. The end. Oh, wow. Karima, as we looked at those kids, they looked absolutely fascinated and taken up by all this. Oh, Rich, I love what I do. I have a great time telling stories to children and adults, and I found that storytelling is a very powerful way to reach the minds and the hearts of people. Yeah, heart's very important. We're not talking about mathematics here. That, that is where you're talking about something objective. You're talking about inside, feelings and passions. Feelings and passions, and that's what changes the world. Uh, when you can go for the positivity of mind and heart, then it brings together all of that and puts the hands to work. And I think that if you want lasting changes, you have to touch minds and hearts. It seems to me that you also have to touch the minds and hearts of people of all backgrounds, which you did. And watching that, it wasn't just African-American children. It was children of other backgrounds, too, who mm -hmm. seemed to feel the commonality of your message. True? Yes, absolutely. It relates back to something I've already said, that... Um, People understand story. 
Story is at the heart of our very existence. People crave story, and every group of people has its own story to tell. Karima Amin, thank you very much. It's thank a pleasure you. being with My you today. My pleasure. Okay. And that's our Channel 2 News special, Juneteenth, a celebration of freedom. As Karima said, all of us love stories. Stories tell us who we are. And now we know a new one. It happened in 1865. It's about how a Union general brought the belated news of, of emancipation to Galveston, Texas. And the date was June 19th. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, this year's celebration is June 19th and 20th at Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Park on Best Street. Everybody is invited to attend. Stay tuned to Channel 2 News for our coverage that weekend. We'll see you soon.